Hey guys, what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA. I've just met Steve today. My friend Chris, who's part of the team who owns Vicious Mustang, Chris saw this car out and I believe it was a Supercar Sunday, wasn't it? It was. So tell me about your car. It's uh, 71? Yeah, 70 and a half, Z28. And it's a real Z28 It's a real Z28, yeah. yeah. It had no drivetrain. The interior was not good. And did you build the car yourself? or No, I just designed it. I have some friends that helped me build it. So not like one specific shop, it's kind of, you move it around for it what's three, needed? Three shops. Okay. Alan Palmer from Alan Palmer's Customs did all the body, all the custom work that you see yeah. and the paint. Which is exceptional, by the way. I mean, we saw it out in the light, obviously, as you were coming in and every paint body spectacular on the car, it really is. Yeah, yeah. He, he's a very, very talented painter. You know, he didn't like a couple of things that I wanted to do, but he did them anyway. Yeah, You know, like what? Point like he, out didn't what want me to, he didn't want me to cut the rear spoiler down. He didn't want to paint this stripe underneath the hood, which it is. I like that you did that. Can we pop the hood and, yeah. and take a look and talk about yeah. kind of some of the mechanics? Oh, he didn't want to do the underside because that's a lot of work, the, yeah. the lining up and the, that's, and that you didn't smooth it down to like a. Well, we a, filled these pockets in with yeah. metal because yeah. when they were open, it looked bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really super clean. But I've we, only seen a couple cars that have done that, that have carried it through it, the undersides. And it goes the down the lid. firewall. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's something I liked. Wow, this is really beautiful, man. So Alan Palmer's company did all the paint and body on the car. Yep, all the fitment. Any these, metal work that's done, it's all them. Yep, this uh -huh. carbon fiber nose, which is something I liked because I hate the seam here. Yeah. The bumpers, I don't know if you look at the way these bumpers fit this car, but yeah. that's all him. And of course, it's pretty perfect as far as gaps go. I mean, it's a very perfect car. But, uh, other than the obvious tuck of the bumpers, there's no body mods, huh? No, I mean, we I mean, removed a couple of things. The... Yeah, you know, it's- No, I no. see like how you, like, you know, drip rail's gone away. Yeah. It's not widened, it's not- no, it's stock. Which I, I- And this hood, when I bought this car, it did not come with this hood. It had a, like an L88 style hood. I did not care for that. I, and yeah. I looked long and hard for this, a original 70 Camaro hood. Yeah. It's I'm, really cool, Steve, yeah. how much you, sorry to interrupt right. you. I just get yeah. all fired up, man. Yeah, you're good. In the time of building cars, I would say we've seen it go like a pendulum swinging, right? And sometimes it's really radical where there's nothing left of the original car. For one, I think I think second gen Camaros are some of the coolest things. Yeah, ever. I do too. I just love this body. LT4? It's an LS7. LS7, got it. Obviously a Magnuson supercharger, and then it's got a, a Wagner accessory drive, which is, all black, nice, just the way I wanted it. Billet oh, yeah. special, these valve covers with the false caps so you can't see the coil packs. Which looks great. I love, as soon as I saw those. Kind of makes it feel a bit like an old school motor. I put know? a blower on it because I didn't like the way it looked with the injectors, the, the, what it came with. So you did it more for the look and yes. then you went and added how much more power to an already powerful yeah. engine? <laughs> I don't know, I mean, you, 100, you gotta 150 horsepower. More, 850 horsepower? No, it's, it's 720 right now. So okay. we can't throw a lot of boost to this. It's LS7, so it's high compression as it is. Yeah, it is, so, yeah. You know, and it's all Detroit Speed uh, headers, stainless headers, it's stainless exhaust all the way to the back. It's custom after the headers. Yeah. Actually, the whole car is sitting on Detroit Speed. This is their Hydroform subframe. Uh-huh. And then their frame connectors. Uh -huh. And then their four link kit in the rear. Their little mini tub kit we so put you went in. the full Detroit speed. Yeah, package. it's all Detroit. Yeah. Even their motor mounts. Their yeah, know, I, I like their stuff. Yeah, I'm a big fan. So, and, and then what's your transmission in the rear it's end on the car? It's a Tremec six speed, and then it's a Ford rear end that yep. I actually bought from Detroit Speed and narrowed. Yep. That's how we've got these big tires fitting in there. Yep. Boy, they just did such beautiful work, like looking at those little detail-y things, like seeing the plumbing and stuff, you know? Your master, is that all hidden <laughs> away? So, is that all? I was waiting for you to ask. So we have uh, electric power brakes on this car. So that's the power system is electric. So it allowed me to put the master under the dash. I could put it wherever I want at that point. So is it, it is a bitch to access it. If you needed to put fluid in it, it's right here under this uh, lid that we put in. Oh, I love when people do smart things like that. <laughs> yeah, and do you know the guy that hides the stuff under the dash so it looks really cool, and then you got to pull the whole dash apart to add brake fluid, right? No, we thought about that, and the wiper motor is under there too. I don't have wipers on the car, but they do. But it work. does have working yeah. wipers if you need. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah. put everything. The idea was to not see any wiring, any anything. And so I think we succeeded. We even added this right here. 
to the fender, this channel that looks stock, but it isn't, and that's all these to lines are running through there just to keep it clean. The inner fender is, is indented to make that fit in nicely. Yeah. As far as like all the mechanical components on this car being assembled and stuff, who, who did that? Alan Palmer put it back together for me. It was on a rotisserie at his shop. So they do full mechanical restoration as then. well then. He doesn't do that now, but he did then. Got it. But, How um, long ago was this car done? We just finished this car 60 days ago. It Got took, it. this is a 10 year build. This took me 10 years to build this car. Is it, so question for you on that is, is the 10 years, is it because of a, like any form of a budget constraint or is it you're moving along and you stop and you... A I, Alan, Alan Palmer was like four or five of them, you know. He's a busy guy, but it. he's worth the wait. I mean, there is a lot of money that went into this car, but it wasn't, that didn't hold up the build. But from Alan's, then it went to a place in Fillmore called Full Throttle Customs. Okay. I've heard the name, I don't, I can't say I know them, but yeah. Brian that works there is an incredible, just mechanic. He wired this whole car, all the electronics are in the trunk. There's a panel behind my back seat there. Everything is sitting there. Can you see, panel. is it visible no, from the trunk can't. or you got a panel there? There's probably. a panel there, you can't see sure. anything. Sure. It's got dual batteries, there's one in each fender well. But they're accessible from panels. Yeah, like they just the, pull out. Yeah, yeah. Wow, those headers are just beautiful, man. Yeah. Aren't they? They're nice. It took them three tries to get me a set that worked. Yeah. It was their first time they tried making a set that worked with a first and second gen car, and it didn't work. And then they sent me a second set, it didn't work. And I kept saying, you know, just send me the parts, so we'll put them together and then we'll send them back to you so you can see how it works. And then they, the third try, they got it right. Aren't LS7's dry sump cars? Yeah, this is a dry sump car. Where's your dry sump tank? Right here. I was just gonna ask if that's what, I'm yeah. sitting here looking at an LS7 going, where's the, yeah. like no issues with heating because of where it's placement or no. anything like that? That is the second tank that is it? We, we built. The first tank, the guy that built it, didn't know how to, obviously how to build these tanks. And there's, it's baffled and he didn't leave it large enough weep holes, just created a bunch of pressure so in the just tank. not enough for No, so we, we punched a bunch of big holes and it put it all back together. And now it's now working it well. fine, yeah. yeah. We were lucky. Because that's a risky one to do. You know, that's yeah. one of those where you go, ah, let's go with the OE part. But I get it, like it's not, it's. Didn't fit it, it didn't I fit understand. the scene. Yeah. yeah, and probably to put it back in the trunk, you don't have the space for it. So that would, no. yeah, yeah. And that's a lot of line. Are these forge lines on here? Yeah, those are forge lines. They uh, were kind enough to work with me a little bit on this because I had them ship me these three piece wheels disassembled. We painted them the, our colors. And then we shipped them back to Chicago and they assembled them, they shipped them back to me. And that's how we got these wheels. They're cool people, aren't they? Yeah, that was a big ask, but they did it. Yeah, God, the color is so good on it. Oh, I can't wait to see it back out in the light again. What's your tire size? That's uh, 335, 35, 18s in there. 275, 35, yeah. I like that you did 18s and it still yeah. allows you to put plenty of brake under it, you know? Yeah, big Willwood brakes with the nickel calipers. Nickel was part of my color scheme. Yeah, I see it. If you yeah. looked underneath this car, the whole suspension, all the control arms, drag links, everything, I'll paint it my three colors, one of my three colors. Wow. Man, it's a pretty car. Boy, it sits right on the 18s. I, I, I know a lot of people like it. I'm just not a fan of old muscle cars with like 20s and 22s and stuff. I, I yeah. Dude, I'm, any of you guys that are into that, I'm not knocking you, don't worry about it. I'm not giving you grief. <laughs> Just not my thing, I'm old, man. I like, I mean, even I'm 18s, old. cause you think about it, right, dude? We grew up in an era where these were on 15s, 15s. but it sits so well, the When well, you look at it stuff, from the rear, it's got, it's pretty. It's you, beautiful, It man. obviously has something. Boy, is that bumper just tucked. Yeah, that's Alan right there. And so you did cut down the spoiler? Yeah, he didn't like me doing that either. Why? It, um, it's a you lot of work. You're not talking about a cut from here, it's no, this cut right there. Down. Yeah. yeah. The width of the stripe. Yeah. It's hard though, that's. Oh no, I can understand yeah. that, but it looks exceptional. Yeah, it's just something I liked. And I like how it's shaped here instead of just cut, go across, come back up. The, yeah. the shape is. I did too, I like. Oh, I understand why he hated you on that. Sure, yeah. I can get that. He did. And then your exhaust comes out where? I mean, obviously there's dual exhaust. Oh, I exhaust. see it now, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. L like a Corvette, it's running through the uh, transmission cross member. Yep. To get clearance, and there's no mufflers on this car. Really? 
This car is set up with uh, kind of an, we sort of experimented with it with augers. So inside here is augers. We're laughing by the way, because my buddy Dave, who we just, we just reshot his car the other day as a GT350. And he's the only guy I've ever heard mention augers in an exhaust. This car has augers. You heard it, how it sounds. It sounds, no, it sounds great. And I, you know, I, I've only heard it at an idle, but it's not loud. Not loud. So does the auger help to create some yeah. muffling? Yeah, it, I mean. I mean, I know it changes yeah, the tone by the movement of the air. Creates a spin, yeah. and there's two on each side. So it just <laughs> creates back pressure and just puts a spin into it and it quiets it up. Love that you kept the stock door handles, yeah. obviously a nicer one, and that's refitted, isn't it? Yeah, I didn't yeah. want Kindig or handles. I like them, but I didn't want them for my car. Thank you, I'm totally with you. Same yeah. thing with your side views. Yeah, stock. The mirrors the, and the front and rear spoiler are all painted that kind of matte color, mm -hmm. a little different. Mm -hmm. And the door handles. Yeah. And the trim around the windows, but. Okay, now, now somebody else had to have done the interior. So this was done by a dear friend of mine. Uh, his name is Albert Lara, who's a crazy interior guy. He's done a couple cars for me. Where's he out of? He's right here in Sun Valley. What's the name of his shot? I mean, it, Albert Lara. Come on. Yeah. I, I marvel at how like so-called small our industry is supposed to be. And yet there's people doing, I haven't even looked yet. And there, there's people like doing this fantastic craft work yeah. that, that you don't hear of. This is beautiful, man. You know, these door panels are kind of cool. Relocated the door handles down here. Yeah, beautiful though and not, and you know, dude, you go diamond stitch, you can go over the top quickly, man. Yeah. You really can, and all of a sudden it looks like a pimp mobile, but this looks... This does not. I can smell it. You used like high quality leather yeah. in here. Yeah. This burnt red, that was another kind of like chance. We, we thought it would look good, but I don't know. I was a little worried about it, but I think it looks good. Okay to sit in here? Yeah. Oh my gosh. And I love that you put a freaking tilt on there. Yeah. Genius. That's a uh, Flaming River uh, steering column. Cool choice to go with a Momo wheel. Gotta why why Momo. don't more people use Momo wheels in our pro touring world? Gotta have a Momo. And this is the right color, the nickel. Yeah. And it's got a Dakota Digital uh, dash. It's all Dakota Digital. Beautiful, man. All fits in stock positions, yeah. right? Has the dash been, this has been, re, this has reworked a lot, actually. Yeah, that's, I mean, Albert did the that's dash. That's a full custom dash, right? Yeah, I mean, it started as a stock dash and Albert turned it into this. Yeah, I love the choice to go, rather than covering the whole thing, to yeah. paint matte so you don't get the reflection. What are these seats from? I mean, you know, they're custom frames, but Albert, <laughs> they're all, uh, they're not, they're all custom seats. And then the rear seat, we had to, that's the stock seat that we removed um, about four inches or so out of the center of it and then put the frame back together to cover the uh, mini tubs. Wow, this is- Because you got to remember that the tires are sitting like right here. Yeah. So he, Albert was really, really helpful in getting that done. Stunning interior. Yeah. Albert Laura? Laura. L-A-R-A, L -A -R -A, yeah. And, and that's like Lara. carpet out of a Jag. As you say, it is like total German weave, yeah. like, like old Porsche and stuff, yeah. you know? Your ergonomic setup on here, which I don't know about you, but that stuff will drive me completely bonkers when you can't comfortably sit in a car, but. It's comfortable. Like right away I sit in here, and I'm like, ah, yeah, let's go for a drive. And it's got a vintage air in it also. Yeah. Can we uh, pop open the trunk and just see the. Yeah, I mean, it's not like pretty, but I mean, it's pretty, but. It... Okay, so you didn't go ballistic back. I didn't no. know. We wrapped it in leather and Albert didn't like it. By the way, just so you guys know, this car is for sale. I oh. don't know the no do you have a do you have a number you want to say on it? Right there. No, no that's your phone oh. number. Uh. I'm talking about the yeah, different no, number, the, the number. one the one that says how much comes out of my pocket. Uh. if somebody's interested in this car, yeah. honestly, give Steve a call. Look, he's publicly putting his number out. We don't have to do that, by the no, way. That's fine. I mean, there might be a lot of people that watch this. That's fine. But, okay, there's his phone number. Don't call to give him shit, only call with an offer for the car. Hi, I'm Sean from Autotopia LA Used Car Sales. We got this here second gen Camaro for sale. It's a nice one. <laughs> you'll uh, <laughs> you'll appreciate that it makes lots of horsepower. No, Plural. I'm just joking, sorry you guys. But the truth is, the car is for sale. So Steve said throw up his phone number here. Beautiful car, man, obviously. Well, I'll mm. tell you what, Steve, let's, let's uh, take a little time, get the shots we need to get of your car, and then we'll go for some driving. By the way, you guys, just so you know, 
the driving we're gonna do today is gonna be very mild driving. The car has about 50 miles on it. It's a very, very, very fresh build. Any of you that want to give us grief, go just go give it to someone else because we're being smart here. So, but we are gonna go drive this car in a little bit. So stick around. As far as people, if, if somebody goes, yeah, I'd love to buy that car. 250. 250. You know, me and the guys were just talking about it, and one of them said, I'll bet two to 250. And I said, that buys you the car without any of the parts. That gets you the paint body and the metal work. And so that's an exceptional buy, actually. So you guys, off camera, I was asking Steve, after 10 years and this extraordinary of a build, why is he selling the car? Why don't you tell him why you're selling it? We're gonna go right up here, by the way. It's too nice. <laughs> All I worry about is something's gonna to happen to it. It's just too nice. I'm not laughing at that yeah. far. I'm, la I'm laughing at the idea that 10 years, I got no idea how much dollars you have in this car, but you got some bucks in this car. Yeah. Ah, cool, I got 50 miles on it. Yeah, it's too <laughs> nice, I'm selling it. It didn't start out of like this, like, it was, I was thinking, oh, I'll have a daily driver. Got it. But, you know, things change. I can't say I would have the same approach of sell it because it's too nice, but you know what? I don't know what it's like to spend 10 years building and putting this kind of money into something. Honestly, I don't know, Steve. Boy, from the 30 seconds of being in it, it sure feels like a nice car on the road. It's stiff. It is stiff, but but yeah, it, I mean it should be right. So yeah. you so you create better handling and well, it's not a luxury car. No, and, and and DSE didn't create this package to to turn it into a luxury car. It was yeah. it's a performance oriented suspension package. Yeah, you know. So I'm noticing now with uh, I love how how much of the stock stuff is retained here. It's all stock. Glove box. The center console is as well, right? Is no, that, it's not. No. So that's all made to look original. Yeah, and this this is all original. This is the glove yeah. box under the steering yeah. wheel. Yeah, just, yeah. I just like, I, I didn't need to reinvent the wheel. I like the way it was. Oh, by the way, you guys, I didn't introduce Jack. Jack is Steve's son. Say hi, Jack. Hi. <laughs> As we were taking off to go for a drive, he uh, definitely had the look on his face like he was hoping to get to ride in the car. Are you okay back there? Oh, it's yeah. pretty tight, right? Yeah, but it's all good. Though. Yeah. kicks in, you go, ah. Boy, you can tell this car makes a lot of power. It does. What'd you say it is? Seven what? 720. When we had it on the dyno uh, at Full Throttle Customs. Got it. It really is kind of mild. Like, you know you can push a lot more. I mean, you can probably put this car in easily 850, 900. And like, honestly, do you really need to? I don't. This is good for me. It's a stock LS7, you know? Could have, except for the blower and the studded heads. There's, you could do a lot more. Yeah. But why? It's just funny how we're like, I, I talk about this in our videos a lot, and I, I know there's some guys out there that go, ah, oh, come on, you can always use more power. And I get it for some people, that's the thing, but I personally don't need a thousand horsepower. I, I honestly, I don't know how to drive a thousand horsepower. Even this, this will get away from you in a quick second. It will. You got no granny assists on this car. No. 
at any time we if we punch it, it it'll break loose. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. No, I'm cool with just doing our mild crews like this, Steve. This is working for me. All right. Especially with lap belts. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you this. You said 50 miles. Mm -hmm. Is that since there's no like one build shop that did it, it's not like people went out and put break in miles on for you, right? Now, um, Brian from Full Throttle put some on it. You can see we didn't have a speedometer work until a little while ago. Um, that's why it's got 22 miles on the clock. Got it. But we probably put 30 miles on it, maybe, before we got that. That was a computer, because the digital dash, the Nakoda digital dash is all, you know, settings. You know, drivability seems good, you know. We've had some issues, you know, here and there that we've just attacked and fixed, but nothing hardly at all. Yeah. Like right now, driving, all your temps look good and oil pressure looks good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I tell you from the passenger seat, it's a nice cruising car. I mean. Yeah. I, I thought the same thing. I only drove it around my neighborhood, around Simi. <laughs> I mean, they say, you should drive it to supercar Sunday. I'm like, uh, no. I don't want to. <laughs> I have a car I'm trailer. sorry. I'm laughing at you, dude. I just... I can't get over the idea of going through the all the all the things involved in building a vehicle of this nature over that course of time. And then going, oh man, this is way nicer than I thought it was going to be. Well, that was a test of what the car is right there. Yeah, it doesn't like bumps really like that, but it handles. But you got no bottom out. You got no car wiggle. It didn't upset it. No. Nothing underneath rubbed or hit. No. I mean. trouble guys. Wanted to go into limp mode? I don't know what happened. Alright, flipping at you, coming back. Just, Great. just shut down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is part you know what though? It, it's I've said this before because we've had things like this happen before in shoots, and in my opinion, this is part of that shakedown process. So this is what it's called doing shakedown on a car. The car has 50 miles on it. There's no question, it's an extraordinary build. And oftentimes part of the shakedown process is as simple as brand new parts that fail. Sounds like it might be a fuel pump, but there's something going on where this car is all of a sudden not getting fuel. So anybody that's been through it, I know you can relate to Steve's frustration right now. And anyone that hasn't been through it, God bless you should the day come because this will happen to you as well. So with that said, somebody's still gonna score an amazing car should you buy this one at 250K and there might be a few things to sort out. Try building this car for 250. Not gonna happen. So I'll leave you with that. And as always a massive thank you for hanging out and watching what we do. And thanks for all the comments recently. Please, comments, likes, shares, subscribes, all that stuff. I genuinely appreciate it and it helps my team out as well. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.